At the time this happened, I lived in Missouri. When I was about five or six years old, I was sound asleep in my bed one night. It had to be at least after midnight. At this point, very suddenly, I was awoken out of my sleep, only to see a strange man standing over me, with his hands wrapped around my wrists. The moonlight slightly illuminated my room, and I could make out the man's face, sort of, mostly his thick mustache. I was overcome with fear in that moment, and began to scream my head off. The man rushed out of my room immediately, and not even a few moments later my parents rushed in to see what was wrong. I was crying my eyes out and told them what had just happened. My dad thoroughly searched the house, but nothing was found. That night my parents did their best to calm me down, and my mother slept by my side until I fell asleep later that very same night. Even further into the evening that same thing happened again. This time, though he was a lot gentler with grabbing my wrists. I imagine he thought if he was a little more gentle, he would be able to kidnap me while I was asleep. I'll never forget the shriek I made in that moment. You can't even begin to imagine the fear that person was somehow in my home once again and trying to take me away forever. Once again, he ran away. My parents let me sleep in their bed for the rest of the night. When I finally became a teenager, my mom and I were talking about that incident. She told me that, apparently, while I was outside playing with my dad earlier that day, she was bathing my six-month-old brother when she'd noticed someone walk past the bathroom quietly as possible. At that point, alarm bells were going off in her head. Of course. She then began to hear these strange noises coming from the bedroom. She wrapped my brother up in a towel and carried him in her arms. She went outside as fast as she could. She thought the man was trying to bait her to come inside alone. My father went into the house instead and checked everywhere, but there was no one to be found. My parents' theory is that they were somehow able to get in from the back door, which led to the unfinished basement. What creeps me out, though, is that he was so quiet. Everything in the home remained untouched when he intruded. I always think about what would have happened if I just slept through all of that. I could have easily been kidnapped or even worse, killed. My parents wanted to get out of this house as soon as possible. Of course. We didn't feel safe. They sold it ASAP and moved us into a two-bedroom apartment while our new house was being built elsewhere. I was very sad to move, of course, and I missed my friends a whole lot, but my safety was more important than anything else. I'm a 21-year-old senior in college living with three other girls in an old, one-story house. We're located about a 15-minute walk from the main campus, and the majority of our neighbors are also college students. That being said, this town is notorious for being a little unsavory. Millie is home to one of the first insane asylums built in America. After the majority of it being closed down and abandoned for years, the building was finally shut down about a month ago and the remaining patients were released. Now, I can't say for sure this is directly correlated with my creepy experience, but I'm not the only one who's had interesting encounters with strangers since this release in this town. Two nights ago, after getting off work around 11.30, I came home to my roommates getting ready to go for a night out. I realize how stupid now it was. But we often had an open door policy, free for anyone to come over and visit as they pleased. We would lock the door at night, of course, but the one time we forgot, we really came to regret it. Around midnight, I was hopping in the shower. As my roommates were heading out the door, we said our goodbyes, and I told them I would meet up with them later that night. I had just stepped out of the shower when I heard what sounded like the front door slamming shut. I automatically assumed one of the girls had forgotten something, so I called out their names, only to hear no response. I began to hear footsteps coming down the hallway towards me. I called out again, no response. Fear and dread came over me. I grabbed my clothes and ran back to the bathroom. I threw them on, leaned my ear to the door and waited in silence to hear if someone was in the house. I heard nothing. I decided it must have been one of my roommates grabbing something and leaving again. I headed into the living room to grab my phone only to see six missed calls and the phone still ringing. My roommate Carrie was frantic on the other end. 
I answered and could immediately hear the panic in her voice. Are you in the house? Yeah, why? You need to get out now. Sam drove by and said he saw a man walking through the front door. He called the police, but you need to leave right now. Nothing was going to my head besides adrenaline and fear. I couldn't be sure what the man's intentions were, of course, but I wasn't going to wait around and find out while remaining on the phone with my roommate. I bolted out the front door and hid behind my car. I watched the house from afar, waiting anxiously to see any movement. My thought process was not at its finest at this point, and I realized I could have made some smarter decisions, maybe. As my friends approached in a truck, I sprinted out from behind my car and jumped into the bed of their truck. As I did that, a dark figure scurried off into the woods, running in the opposite direction. I could only assume he had been quietly inching closer to my hiding spot. As I was waiting for them to arrive, I screamed bloody murder, and we floored it out of there and refused to go back into the house until the police arrived and triple-checked it. There were no signs of anything being touched or stolen, which makes me really wonder what the guy's intentions were. I can guarantee you, though, that I've locked my door every single night since. I was a pretty and relatively smart 15-year-old girl, a good kid who did well in school, despite a tough childhood. I was working at an amusement park full-time during the summer. The area I lived in could be a bit sketchy at times, but having grown up with little to no adult supervision, I was used to trying to look out for myself. My father was out of town. Mother was long out of the picture. My sister, three years older, and myself were staying in our home alone. I finished work at 11 p.m. when the park closed that day and walked myself home. As I usually did, it wasn't very far at all, perhaps just a 10-minute walk. I arrived to an empty home. My sister still out somewhere, and I got ready for bed, putting my pajamas on and crawling down into it. I was just starting to fall asleep when I heard a small noise. I didn't know what it was, but it didn't seem like just a usual house noise. My bedroom was on the second floor with stairs leading up to it. I didn't hear anything after that noise, though, so I didn't investigate and chalked it up to nothing. I started to fall back asleep, when just as I was about to, I heard what sounded like hesitant footsteps on the stairs. I was instantly bolted awake, but in my mind it must have been my sister coming home, climbing the stairs to where her bedroom was. Still laying in bed, I called out, Wendy, Wendy, is that you? I heard nothing back, and yelled again, nothing but more footsteps. I was petrified. But as I told the story to this day, I don't understand some of my reactions that night, so I really can't explain them well. I got out of bed, opened the ajar bedroom door fully, and went out to the stairs, where I stood at the top. Below me, about halfway up the stairs, was a man I had never seen before. He looked to be early twenties, just a bit taller than my five foot seven. Not a huge guy, but he had a solid build with blonde, curly hair. I asked the man what the hell he was doing. His reply was a garbled mess of something along the lines of, Where's Wendy? My mother told me not to get mixed up with women. Where's Wendy? From his manner and wild-eyed look, it seemed like he may have been doing some drugs. He had followed me home from the park and was asking, Where's Wendy in response to my calling out for her? For some reason, at this exact moment, I got very angry. Not just scared, but angry. I started screaming at him to get out, to get the hell out of my house, that I was going to call my father and Wendy. To my surprise, he did just that. He turned around and ran back down the stairs like a bat out of hell, and I didn't see where he went after that. It turns out he must have just left. I've no idea how he even got in in the first place, but he was definitely there for me. That's why he'd followed me home, not burglary or anything else. He was looking to take advantage of me, and who knows what else. I think the only reason he actually left was because he had no idea where my sister Wendy was and thought she was in the house with me. It was an added complication to possibly getting him caught. I was so shaken. I stayed up the rest of the night. I didn't call the cops, didn't call a friend. The only person I told was my sister. The next day, I don't know why I did that. 
I just sat in a rocking chair clutching my cat, rocking and crying, staying awake till the next morning. My sister never did come home that night, stayed at a friend's and came home the next day. This all happened 35 years ago, but I've still never told anyone until now.